Hey folks and welcome back to Frugal Radio. This video is part two on my series of experiments with the Kraken SDR. Today we put its direction finding capabilities to the test. I'm gonna lay my cards on the table right now and just let you know, the performance that we experienced was highly impressive. If you haven't already watched part one, I recommend viewing it before you watch this video as it shows the setup that preceded the actual direction finding tests. But without further ado, let's go direction finding with the Kraken SDR. I had all the essentials placed in what I call my go box. The Kraken SDR, the magnetic mount antenna set, a tape measure in case I needed to adjust the antenna array spacing, the USB cables, the Raspberry Pi 400, and the printed instructions in case I needed to quickly refer to something. I also brought along the antenna template that I made. Last year I had logged a tier 2 DMR Connect Plus trunk system that wasn't listed in radio reference. When I looked up the licensing information for the frequencies it was listed just to a numbered company. No amount of research yielded the actual user of the system. The numbered company was using a PO box in the city, so I figured there was a decent chance of the site being in or near the city itself. Given that the system is fairly low power, I'm unable to receive the signals from home. So I, along with my friend Harry, drove to a location just south of the city, pulled over and started setting up the equipment. The first thing to do was to set up the antenna array on the roof of the vehicle. You'll notice I had written numbers on the template corresponding to the channel of the SDR for each antenna. I positioned the template with channel 0 facing the front of the vehicle. The centre of each magnetic mount was positioned over the blue 14 cm line I had drawn to ensure accurate spacing. I folded the extra paper underneath the rest of the template and made sure the SMA connectors were facing the rear passenger door where the coax cables would be passed into the SUV. I connected the coax to the SMA connectors on each antenna, then carefully fed them beneath the roof rails. I had wondered if these roof rails would interfere with the direction finding, but thankfully this didn't appear to be the case. A further point to note is that the coax cables had to be routed in the same way. By keeping the cables together, they experience the same bends and kinks, which ensures accurate timing of the received signal at the Kraken SDR. It's also important to note that the coax for each antenna be the exact same length. I grouped the cables and added a twist tie to keep them all together and to stop them blowing around too much. I now had five coaxes coming down to the rear of the vehicle. Each was identified by its channel tag, so hooking up to the Kraken SDR was quick and simple. The cables weren't quite long enough to allow me to place the Kraken on the floor as I had originally intended, so I made room on the back seat instead. Here's how the array looked when the coaxes were attached to the Kraken. I grabbed my recently purchased 12 volt to 5 volt USB adapter so I could power the Kraken and Pi. I've included a link to a similar product on Amazon in the description below since it performed really well for me. The Kraken must be powered and booted before the Raspberry Pi or the Pi will not be able to see it. So it was the first to get plugged in. The data cord was connected between the Kraken and the Pi. Next I ensured my phone hotspot was running. This would provide a network for the Pi to join and then any devices I had in the vehicle would be able to communicate with it. Once the hotspot was running, I connected the Pi to the power adapter and let it boot. So th this is the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So 192.168 is 29.189. So then we'll load up the Kraken app and go to settings. Okay, so it's actually the same IP address as it gave it the other day. So that's good. So if we go to the settings. Pop 
power level is on overdrive, so I need to quickly drop the receiver again. Which it won't let me do while I'm recording. I set a centre frequency for the Kraken, tuned the VFO to the control channel and we started heading for the highway. I had set the radio not to log when the vehicle was sitting still, so we turned off the service road ready to join Highway 21. Already the software was beginning to draw plot lines in these few seconds. By the time we had turned onto the highway, a few seconds later, we could see the lobe lines showing the most probable area the transmitter would be located. The larger black lobe was the strongest possibility. Driving at approximately 100 kilometers an hour, or over 60 miles per hour, we could see how the software was continuously updating. The red line was showing the current direction of travel of the vehicle. The dark blue lines were showing calculated bearings along which the transmitter would be located. Overlaid on these was a light blue line representing the average bearing calculated so far. The coloured red circle was the software's first attempt at pinpointing a transmitter location. The first guess happened after only 38 seconds of driving and each second as more data was collected this location was refined. Now this is quite incredible. After only 38 seconds of driving, the Kraken SDR had created an estimated transmitter location. Then the magic happened. The circle turned green, indicating that the location had now been pinpointed. I want to stress that we had only been driving for 84 seconds when this happened. Harry and I were quite surprised that the location had been found in under a minute and a half. This seemed incredible. Zooming in, we could see that there was actually a little octagon inside which was a little diamond shape. This was showing us what the software was estimating to be the exact position of the transmitter. Please note this footage was recorded in real time and has not been sped up. It really took less than one and a half minutes to calculate the location using this direction finding equipment. The live mapping section of the software suggested we should exit the highway just up ahead. Turning 90 degrees onto a road heading east resulted in the red line showing the new bearing of the vehicle. The lighter blue line moved around a little at this time as well but within a few seconds was showing the same bearing as it had before, if not even more accurately. You'll notice how it passes right through the green hexagon. This was a great sign, showing us that the vast majority of readings were pointing to the same location. Given our surprise at just how well this software was working, I decided to pull over and talk to camera. So I'm here with uh, my buddy Harry and um, we're yeah, we're, we, we look look like we've um, managed to find what we're looking for. So we've been driving only for about five minutes with the uh, the Kraken SDR and it, it's already plotted a location in green, which is pretty impressive. So I'm just going to show you the screen here. Um, so this is it. And um, you can see that green circle. So that's it telling us it thinks that's where the transmitter is located. And, uh, and then the lower part of the screen here is, uh, is providing a map. So we're just going to keep on filming for a bit as we uh, draw closer. We, it looks like we're pretty close to that transmitter. So we're going to give it a try and uh, see where we get. As we drove away, the phone's compass recalibrated and the map started pointing in the correct direction again. It turns out that the transmitter location was still a further 13 minutes drive away, so I have cut and sped up this part of the footage. We were honestly shocked that the Kraken SDR had plotted a location as quickly as it had. As we drove, the Kraken continually fed more data to the Pi, which in turn continued to confirm the transmitter location. The lower part of the display updated to show a driving route on the map to the calculated position. Soon we were very close to the transmitter site and pulled in and off the highway. A minute or so later we were very close to the site. I zoomed in on the Kraken SDR app and disabled the plot lines. This allowed us to see the location very clearly as we drove around.
Within a few minutes we had arrived on site and were able to locate ourselves in a parking lot. You'll notice at this stage we were now inside the octagon. All right, so uh, the direction finding has successfully led us to a site. Um, it's not the company that we initially thought it was, which is interesting, but we're, uh, according to the GPS, right within the circle that the Kraken SDR has populated, uh, which I'll show you in just a second. But we are on a, on a plant of some description, not exactly sure what they make here, uh, but it would make sense that they're using a DMR trunked system. It's listed um, as a uh, numbered company, so at least now we know who the user is. So all in all, we're very happy with what the Kraken has produced. It's uh, showing us right in the, in the zone, very close to the transmitters, although we actually don't see the transmitters, and it looks like we can't drive further around the site to find them. So um, yeah, so what we've got is what we've got. But uh, yeah, very happy with uh, how it worked out with the Kraken SDR today. Well, we stopped in for a bite to eat, and, uh, and then figured, after the highly successful first test, we're going to do a second test and see if we can find another site. This site is in a completely different frequency, so we're going down from 858 megs down to the 770 band. So um, yeah, about 80 megs difference. I plugged the numbers in on the spreadsheet here, uh, the antenna calculator that uh, the RTL SDR provide uh, as a download. And it tells me that actually we should still be good. I don't need to respace the antennas. So I'm going to keep them at that 14 centimeter distance. That will, uh, that will leave me with a multiplier between 0.4 and 0.45, which is perfectly acceptable for what we want to do. So it's uh, back on the road and uh, tracking down an emergency services uh, P25 system site. So now we're heading out to direction find another site and uh, having a great day out here with the Kraken SDR. So you can see the antennas uh, connected there to the Kraken. And I've just powered up the vehicle so the Kraken is powered up. I discovered that the Kraken has to be powered up before the Pi. If uh, the Pi is powered up first it doesn't see the Kraken. So uh, we'll just hook this baby in. I have the green light flashing there on the Pi, indicating that it is booting up just fine. Pi is connected to the SDR, both of course being powered off that um, cigarette lighter plug that you saw earlier. Antennas are still in the same location as you saw earlier. And then Harry's here with a couple of radios, so we've got a commercial radio and, uh, and also the SDS scanner that we're using to uh, monitor the site that we're actually going to be heading over to. I used a tablet to view the web interface on the Pi and updated the center frequency and other parameters. Everything was green and looking good. For some reason the Pi refused to connect to my phone's hotspot so I ended up using the ad hoc network it creates to control the Pi. It worked just the same as in our first test, but meant we had no turn-by-turn -turn guidance as the phone was also connected to the Pi and lost its data. On the spectrum display, we could see that the VFO was perfectly tuned for the signal we wanted to locate. Other transmissions were also visible on the FFT and waterfall. It's very useful to be able to display the spectrum on a tablet or the phone. Unfortunately I forgot to start recording my screen and the footage from the camera when we set off for site 2. We were in a residential area and got completely lost. Then my phone overheated and shut itself off. We waited 10 minutes, rebooted it and were able to carry on. The green coloured dots around the centre show some of where we had driven and then I got another phone overheating warning. As we drove around the neighbourhood, we could see the black lobes moving around a lot, and extra lobes appearing. This was an indication that we were getting lots of multipath distortion. Multipath is when signals bounce off other objects, such as buildings and windows, and get reflected back to the antennas. Given that we were in a residential area, it made sense there would be lots of multipath distortion. Thankfully the logic in the Kraken SDR and software stack was able to continue working out an estimated position and as you can see it didn't change much at all. 
As we got nearer, the small circles plotting our location began changing color, almost like they were getting hotter and letting us know that we were getting closer to our destination. It had taken a total of about 10 minutes of driving once we got out of the neighborhood. However, the Kraken had already identified the transmitter location with the green octagon within just a couple of minutes. Well, we had a few challenges on the last run here, but we're uh, pretty close to the site. Again, the Kraken SDR find this really, really quickly. It gave us the green circle on the map very, very, uh, in very short order. Um, Harry's SDS 100 here, it's showing, what was the signal level now, of the RSSI? Minus 30. Minus is... 30, so I mean basically you could take the antenna off and still be receiving the site. And, uh, and if you look at the map, uh, you'll be able to see we're actually in the circle, like in that sort of octagon or whatever it is. And uh, it's showing that the site is just up ahead. And uh, from what we can see, it is 100% correct. That is the transmitter location right there. So again, the Kraken SDR has brought us right to this, uh, this P25 site. Uh, we're just gonna drive on up this little lane. So we're, we're basically on a service road right now. And, uh, and you can see the app. We're just following along this lane and look at that we've got the transmitter site right here once again the kraken sdr system had plotted a location within a few minutes and we could clearly see it was exceedingly effective in doing so this particular site that housed the p25 public safety trunking equipment was not known to us because its frequencies nor location data have been published Yet within a few minutes, the Kraken SDR had led us to the site. Overall, we were mightily impressed with the performance of the Kraken SDR. When utilized in a small city like this, it had performed flawlessly. It calculated accurate bearings and pinpointed transmitter locations in under two minutes. Admittedly, I live in the prairies, so there's a lot less multipath distortion from mountains, forests and large cities. But we have lots of other transmitter masts and signals being broadcast nearby, so this made the accuracy of the Kraken's findings all the more impressive. I hope you've enjoyed watching these videos on my first outings with the Kraken SDR. Purchase links are in the description below if you would be interested in experimenting with one. Harry and I both said it was one of the most interesting radio days we'd had in a long time, so thanks for sharing it with us here on YouTube. If you enjoyed today's video, please do me a favor and hit the like button. And if you're interested in discovering more about the magic and mystery of radio, then why not subscribe to the channel? To all my current subscribers, it's been great to have you back today, and I hope you find this content to be beneficial to the development of your hobby. I wish you all well, and thank you for watching. For now, this is Frugal Radio, out.